Hello everyone, this is the Fashion Mnist dataset, which consists of 60,000 images of different articles of clothing, shoes, sandals, bags, and our job over here is to build a machine learning model in order for a machine to learn and predict which particular class an image belongs to. So there are 10 different classes to choose from and each fashion image or type of clothing or type of sandal belongs to one of those 10 classes. And so we're gonna be building a convolutional neural network to solve this problem and to classify every single image accurately and as accurately as possible. So can a machine do this and can it do this accurately with a high accuracy percentage? Well, we're about to find out, so let's get started. So there are three questions that comes to mind when talking about this. First, what is a convolutional neural network? How are we going to use it? And why are we using it? And these are the three important questions that we're going to be talking about right now. So a neural network is essentially a complex learning based system that is made up of neurons with each neuron connect containing a numerical value. And each neuron in one layer is connected to neurons in the next layer by weights. Each weight also has a numerical value that basically explains the amount of significance the input has on the next layer. And so what happens in the system is that the input is fed into the first layer and the input could be an image, it can be a numerical value, or it could also be an audio signal. And the input is essentially fed into and forwarded into the system. And the layer between the input layer and the output layer is called the hidden layer and there could be more than one hidden layer in a network. So essentially the next layers use dot products and activation functions to process and understand the data. And this network can be used to understand complex relationships. So essentially the output layer could consist of more than one neuron. It doesn't have to be exactly one neuron, but this, the value in this neuron is compared to a target value, the value that it's supposed to be. And that loss generated between these two values is basically back propagated throughout the network so that the weights are updated and the model performs better next time. And this is to increase the performance. So now that we have a gist of what neural networks are, let's talk about what convolutional neural networks are. So the term convolution refers to like how one function is impacted or changed by another function. This term can be seen in the very first layer of CNNs or convolutional neural networks, which is the convolutional layer, of course. So the convolution layer consists of an image input or the input from the previous layer and a matrix that essentially slides across the image. And it slides across the image and computes a dot product, which then creates a feature map, which essentially extracts the important aspects and important parts and important structures of the image. This is known as the Conv2D layer in Python. Now we move on to the next layer that is called the max pooling layer. And essentially what happens is the input from the previous layer is passed into this layer and it essentially down samples the input. And it's doing this to extract very important aspects and features of the image and to make the input easier to work with so that it has a lower dimension and we can work with it um, instead of working with a higher dimensional image that is hard to process. We also have an activation function right after the convolution layer to obviously make sure that we're extracting the important bits of the image and to get rid of all of the negative and um, redundant values. Then we have the flattening layer, which is a fully connected layer part. So obviously at one point in time, we have to classify the image as one of the classes. So in order to do this, we have to make this an image classification problem. And so we have to basically flatten up the data into a single dimensional data input and we have to basically feed it into an actual neural network, into a simple neural network. So once we flatten up the data and we process it using the conv2d and max pooling layers, we pass it into a simple neural network and we finally classify it based on however many classes we have. In this case, it's 10 classes from zero to nine for the fashion MNIST. All right, so first let's get started by loading in our data set. So I'm going to be importing in my libraries. I'm going to be using NumPy and TensorFlow and Pandas. Um, TensorFlow is essentially an ML platform, um, and I'm going to be aliasing them using NPTF and PD. I'm also going to be importing TFDS um, because I'll be using the Fashion MNIST data set from the TensorFlow data sets library. So first I'll be uh, taking in my training data set and extracting in my training and testing data sets. Training is to train the model, testing is to evaluate the model, and I'll be using the tfds.load function, um, and I'll be using the fashion MNIST data set, obviously, and I'll be splitting it. So I'm gonna be using 60% of the 60,000 samples 
So that's like around 36,000 samples. Um, I just wanted to see if I can get a good accuracy with a lower amount of data. And as you can see, the data set has an image component and a label component. So the label component is basically what class the image belongs to. Now I'm going to be showing you some examples of the Fashion Train data set. So as you can see, these are the uh, pictures and they have their respective classes underneath them. So the one's like a pullover, one is a big, um, there's sneakers too, I think, another t-shirt and top. And they each have a label from zero to nine. So now we're going to be getting on to pre-processing our data. This is a very important step to pre-process your data before using it. And so I'm going to be using an X train and Y train. X train is basically the actual data set and the features, the input and Y train is the label, the target value that you want it to be. This is for the training data set. And so for every instance in my fashion train data set, I'm going to be appending the image to X train because that's our input and the label to Y train. And now, as you can see, I'm going to be converting it to an NP array. So I'm using the NumPy library to do that. Um, so you can actually see the shape of the data. So in this case, there's 36,000 samples of 28 by 28 by 1. So this is a grayscale. And Y train is just 36,000 samples. So now that we have our Y train and our X train, we can clearly see that the Y train is made up of the label. So you can see like some numbers there from 0 to 9. And now we're going to be doing an important step, and this is called one-hot encoding. So one-hot encoding is used to present categorical variables in a different way. And so for each category value, there are 10 different possible labels from 0 to 9. And so for each label, it basically converts it to a sequence of 10 digits in which only one of it is a high digit. It's a digit of 1. And so if there's a 1 in the 0th place, that meets the class label of 0. If there's a 1 in the 2nd place, that's a class label of 2, and so on. And so this is used in order for our neural network to train easily, um, because in our output, we'll be having a probability value in for each neuron in the output, and that will be compared to the one-hot encoded labels. All right, so now we're going to be building our model, our CNN model. So first, I'll be importing a couple of libraries. So first is from TensorFlow. I'll be importing Keras. I'll be importing layers from Keras. And then I'll be importing the classes. So for each particular layer, there's a certain class. Con2D class is for the convolution layer. There's a max pooling and then the dense and flattened layers for the fully connected part. Now I'm going to be declaring my model as a sequential API model, which means I get to basically stack a bunch of layers together. So the first layer I'll be adding is my convolutional layer. I'll be using 20 different filters. My kernel or matrix size that's going to slide over is going to be two by two. I'm going to be having a stride of one, which means it's going to move one horizontally and one down vertically. Um, and then I'll be having an activation of ReLU and my input shape is going to be 28 by 28 by 1 because that is my input shape of the image. And also remember that you can have more than one kernel or matrix that goes over the image. So in this case, I'll be having 20. So I'll be making 20 different outputs, which means 20 different feature maps. So I'll be extracting a lot of features from the image, which is a good thing. Um, the next layer is my max pooling layer, and then I'll be repeating the con 2D and max pooling layer again three times. So this is the second time, and I'll be using 15 different filters um, this time, and I'll be increasing my strides. So it's going to move a little bit faster throughout the image when it's doing max pooling. Um, I'm then going to be adding another con 2D and max pooling layer. That's my third time. And now once we have reduced the dimensionality of the input and we have extracted the important components of the input that make the image unique to other images, um, I'll be adding, flattening my data and then I'll be adding a dense layer of 10 different outputs, one for each class. Now you can see the summary of my model. So as you can see, it has around 4,000 parameters and you can also see the input and output shapes. So now we're going to be getting into compiling and fitting our model. So I'm going to be normalizing the data first so that, so that it's easier to train and deal with. I'm then going to be compiling my model, but first I'll need an optimizer to basically optimize the weights and make sure that the model performance is increased. So I'll be using a stochastic gradient descent optimizer. Um, so I've set the learning rate and momentum to the to the um, required parameter. I've been experimenting a lot with it and 0.1 for learning rate and 0.4 for momentum worked really well with my model and it gave me a pretty good accuracy. Um, I'm then going to be compiling it so I'll be using the loss function as the categorical cross-entropy loss function which is a very popular one for classification. I'll be fitting my model now 
So I'll be passing in my X train, Y train, Epox as 35, and I'll be going through this as batches by setting the batch size to 150. So as you can see, I'm using an accelerated GPU, which is why it's very fast. Um, but overall, I got an accuracy of about 89% on my training data, which is a pretty good accuracy percentage. I'm now going to be evaluating the model. So um, it's pretty easy. You just say dot evaluate X test and on the Y test. Um, and I got around an 87%. Um, and now I'm going to be predicting the classes. Um, with the X test, well, sorry, but yeah, the X test data. So I'm going to be storing this in predictions so you can kind of see what classes my model predicted. I'm now going to be doing something really interesting. So I will be actually um, printing out the predicted class and the target class just to see where the model went wrong um, and what pictures it got confused with, what articles of clothing it got confused with. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to be printing the predictions and the target value just to see where it kind of went wrong. So it did get confused with six and four since six and four look pretty similar in terms of like if their features. Um, and so maybe adding more feature maps could have helped and increase the accuracy. Um, but yeah, that's a lesson learned. And thank you so much for watching.